General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, presents The Lone Ranger. With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hooray! When boys line up to run a race, galloping Gordon sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked. Shaped like little round O's and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowl full, add fresh milk and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Go power. You'll get it from Cheerios. Try it. And folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. It was shortly after midnight when the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode slowly into the Colorado town of Julesburg. Lights could be seen in only one building. The cafe owned by Jake Reynolds. We'll try to buy supplies at the cafe, Tonto. If we can get the flour and other things we need, we'll be able to go on without waiting until the store opens in the morning. That's good. We'll stop behind the building. I'll stay with the horses while you go into the kitchen and try to buy from the cook. Come on, Tonto. Get him up, Tonto. While the masked man and his Indian companion rode toward the dark area behind the cafe, Jake Reynolds sat alone in his office, which, like the kitchen, was in the rear part of the building. The cafe owner was reflecting on the way his business had increased since he'd hired Barbara Andrews as a singer. Yes, come in, come in. Mr. Reynolds. Oh, it's you, Barbara. Do come in, come in. Mr. Reynolds, as of tonight, I finished my three months' engagement here in your cafe. I want to thank you for the work and say goodbye. Nonsense, you're not leaving. Why, you're the most popular singer I've ever had. My business has more than doubled since you started work. You deserve a substantial raise in pay. It's kind of you to say that. How much I... do you want? It's not a question of money. I told you when I came to work here that I hoped to be able to leave at the end of three months. To become a school teacher. To complete my education so I'll be able to teach. I thought you were supporting your mother and brother. I have been, but now my brother has a fine job. Both he and mother want me to become a teacher. I can't afford to let you go. I lose a lot of business. I'm sorry, if but If you I... leave, I'll see that your brother loses his job. You can't do that. I can't, eh? But I'll have you know I have influence in this town. I'll speak to your brother's employer. Then you'll speak to Uncle Sam. What? My brother's working for the government. He's a pony rider. Pony rider? That underfed little sprout? How can he do a man's job? He's worthless and yellow. <coughs> you 
slap my face. That's for the way you spoke of my brother. If you were a man, I'd kill you. Goodbye. Now, hold on. I'm leaving through this door. Not so fast. Let go of my arm. Even though you are a girl, you'll not get away with slapping my face. Let me go. Not until you apologize. Apologize to you? Why, you fat pig face. Apologize. Oh. You hear me? Let me go. You're hurting me. I'll let twist go. your arm until it oh. breaks unless Please, you... Let me throw you to let go. Huh? Please help me. Well, I'm telling you. I'll teach you to mind your own business. Look out for his gun. Not you. That's for trying to draw a sneak gun. You need help? No, Toto. Not far out? He was drawing that derringer. Take the gun out of his hand and put it on the desk. Huh, me do it. Is he the owner of this place? Yes. His name is Jake Reynolds. Maybe men in Cafe hear noise. Come in here. No one could have heard it. The room is soundproof. I, I'm very grateful to you, sir. Even though you may be an outlaw, you... No, I'm not an outlaw. I have personal reasons for wearing this mask. In any case, I'm glad you came in. Toto and I were dismounting behind the building when we heard you cry out. The door was open and we saw you struggling. He, he wouldn't let me leave until I apologized for slapping his face. Well, you're free to leave now. He'll not stop you. But it's late for a girl to walk alone. It's just a short walk home. But I'd be pleased to have you escort me. Despite the fact that I'm a stranger and masked? You've proved to be a friend in time of need. Thank you. Uh, my name's Barbara Andrews. Andrews? I, I knew a man named Andrews. A teacher in the East before he came to Colorado. You see, he died a year ago. He was my father. Oh, he was a fine man. And I'm pleased to meet his daughter. Tonto, uh, we'll lead Scout and Silver and escort Miss Andrews to her home. Ah, we not try to buy supplies? No, not here. We'll camp in the woods until morning, then get what we need in the stores. Mr. Reynolds is regaining consciousness. Let's go before he's able to renew the argument. During the walk to her home, Barbara Andrews found it easy to confide in the masked man. She told about her brother, about Jake Reynolds, and gave a detailed account of the situation that had led to the argument in the cafe owner's office. After leaving the girl, the Lone Ranger and Tonto camped in a woods near town. The masked man, knowing that Reynolds might try to get revenge, decided to remain nearby and watch. Wearing a disguise instead of his mask, the Lone Ranger spent most of his time watching Jake Reynolds as closely as possible. Five evenings after the incident in his office, Reynolds' jaw was still sore from the masked man's blow, but his pride had been hurt even more. Brooding and vengeful, he sat with a hard-faced man named Baxter at a corner table in the cafe. Neither suspected that the man who looked like an old prospector asleep at a nearby table was in reality the Lone Ranger, alert to every spoken word. You can see, Baxter, how my business has fallen off since that singer left. Uh, and it will probably get worse. Yes, losing the business is bad enough. But when I think of her slapping my face... It... She'll regret that. After her brother's lost his job, she'll be begging me to take her back. What makes you think that Garl's brother will lose his pony rider job? I've worked out a plan to get him fired and jailed on top of being fired. That's why I sent for you. I need your help. What do you want me to do? Get someone to help you rob young Andrews and steal the mail. But I don't savvy how you figure that Andrews will be fired and put in jail... Just because he's robbed of the mail. I'll tell Peterson, the station master, that I overheard talk that made me think Andrews was in cahoots with mail robbers. Oh. Then I plant some money in Andrews' pocket. When he can't explain where he got it, his goose will be cooked. Him. <laughs> when do you want the robbery to take place? Tomorrow. Right. His run begins at the station in Rockville. That's east of here. If I know where it is. He finishes his run here in Julesburg. Then he'll ride across that rocky stretch of country about four miles from here. That'd be a good place to waylay him. That's the place I had in mind. Uh, what is in it for me? A hundred dollars now and another hundred when the job is done. Double it, Reynolds. I've got to split with my partner. All right. I haven't time to argue, I've got to call on Peterson before he goes to bed. The two men left the cafe, and a moment later, the disguised Lone Ranger seemed to waken from sound sleep. He sat up, 
leaned back in his chair and rubbed his eyes. He looked around, then shuffled out of the building. In the darkness outside, he walked rapidly to the edge of town, where Tonto waited with the horses. While replacing his disguise with his own familiar clothes and his mask, he told the Indian what he had learned and added... Tonto, I think I know a way to turn the tables on Jake Reynolds. Isn't that good? I'll wait until he leaves Peterson's home, then I'll go in. John Peterson lived alone, conveniently near the Pony Express station. He was surprised when Reynolds came to his home and told of overhearing two men discuss a mail robbery. He was even more surprised when the cafe owner added that the thieves had bribed a pony rider. Did they mention the name of the pony rider? Yes, Ben Andrews. Ben Andrews, huh? Yeah. I suppose you know he's the brother of the girl who sang in your cafe. Yes. The girl who slapped your face. Yep. Oh, the girl just lost her temper. I don't hold that against her. She's a fine young lady, and it's a shame her brother has turned dishonest. I'm not sure that he has turned crooked. If you think I lied... I didn't say that. Can you describe the men you overheard talking about a robbery? Of course I can. But if you're not going to take me seriously... Here's a pencil and paper. You describe them, and I'll write down what you say. All right, Peterson. You'll find out I'm telling the truth. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship ahoy. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats, and every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue... Reynolds gave a fanciful description of two men, then left the house upset but satisfied that he had planted seeds that would develop into serious trouble for the young pony rider. Peterson sat reading over the description, which was too vague in general to be of any importance, when... Peterson, huh? What? Match, did he? I've been waiting outside in the darkness for your last visitor to leave. I I took the liberty of coming through the back door without rapping. But who now, are... here's a letter that should satisfy you that I'm here as a friend. You, a friend? Mask. Please read that. It's signed by a high army official. It explains why I wear a mask. Uh, the Lone Ranger. Great Scott. Did Reynolds tell you one of your men had accepted a bribe? Yes. Uh, how did you... Don't know? ask me how I know. Just tell me whether or not you believe Ben Andrews is dishonest. I can't believe that any of our riders would sell out to crooks. On the other hand, unless Reynolds told the truth, what did he hope to gain? He wants Andrews to lose his job in the hope that Ben's sister will be forced to return to the cafe. He should know that I'd never dismiss a man on such unfounded charges. The charges may prove to be well-founded. You mean Ben is a crook? No. There are plans to frame him. Of all the mean, dirty... Peterson... I'd like to make those plans backfire. So would I, but how? I have a counter plan. I'll need your help. Count on it. Just tell me what to do. Lend me a pair of Pony Express mail pouches. I'll fill them with blank paper, and I'll take them. The following day found Baxter and his partner hidden with their horses behind one of the huge boulders that studded the flat country east of Julesburg. With Reynolds' money in their pockets, the two men watched for Ben Andrews, 
who was making his first westbound trip as a pony rider. Meanwhile, Ben had several miles to go before reaching the scene of the contemplated robbery. Like all pony riders, he wore light, tight-fitting clothes and used a light racing saddle. He was equipped for speed rather than defense. His only weapon was a revolver of small caliber. Uh, get up there. Get along, boy. we got to make time. Get up now. Eager to reach Julesburg on schedule, Ben watched the trail ahead. But suddenly, he heard a shout. Hey. Looking to his right, he saw a white horse approaching from the side. And the rider of that horse wore a mask. Get up. Get along there. The masked man turned his horse and rode abreast of Ben. He was some distance away, but edging closer. As he shouted and raised his hand to signal a halt. He wants me to stop and get robbed. Like blazes, I will. Get up there. Get along now. Realizing that he could not outdistance the masked man, Ben drew his small gun and cried, You come any closer and I'll shoot. Ready in. I'm afraid. I warned you. Even a good marksman would have found it almost impossible to shoot accurately with such a small gun while riding at breakneck speed. Ben's first two shots came nowhere near the masked man. Right in, I want to speak to you. Keep away, do you hear? Keep away. Ben fired two more bullets, both ineffectual. I can't even slow him up. Come on, silly. The masked man and the big white horse came closer. One bullet left. I gotta get him. The last shot missed, like all the others. Then the Lone Ranger guided Silver close to the pony rider's side. Get away, do you hear me? Leave me alone. Leaning to the side, the masked man grabbed the bridle of the other horse. Hold there, hold, 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 Silver, hold. You'll hang for this. they will get you for stopping me. You'll hang, do you hear? Take it easy, Ben. Now listen to me. I'm a friend. I'm here to help you. I'm carrying United States mail. I've stopped you to protect that mail. Listen to me, or you'll be in jail and your sister will be back in Reynolds' cafe. My sister? What do you know about my sister? I know all about the situation. I also know that men are waiting to steal the mail. I brought these pouches for you to carry. They hold blank paper. I'll take the one that you're carrying. No, no. Peterson knows I'm doing this. He loaned me these pouches. What? My boss knows? Yes. We made the plans, and he wants you to cooperate. I'll meet you in the woods at the edge of town and return the mail. Listen to me. I'll explain everything. The masked man soon won Ben's confidence and his cooperation. Later that day, a small group of townspeople stood in front of the station to greet Ben on the completion of his first westbound trip. Ben's sister was among those present. She stood next to John Peterson. Presently, Jake Reynolds approached. Hello, Peterson. Good afternoon, Miss Andrews. How do you do? Have you any business here, Reynolds? Yes, I'm expecting some mail by Pony Express. It should arrive today. Ah. There'd be a cash draft enclosed in the letter, Peterson, for a large sum of money. I'd hate to lose it. If there's any mail for you, you'll get it. Eh? Pony rider, come All right, right, come on, get that one. With Ben in sight, the pony rider who was to carry the mail west from Julesburg came from the stable leading a fresh horse. While everyone watched Ben approaching, Jake Reynolds took from his pocket a $100 bill. He held it concealed in his hand, ready to slip it into Ben's pocket as evidence that the young rider had accepted a bribe. Ho, ho there, ho, ho now, ho. As Ben dismounted, Reynolds stepped to his side and seized him roughly. You, you hey, camp, I want to talk. Uh, let go of Stand me. back, Reynolds. Let my brother go. What's the idea? With his body concealing the move, Reynolds slipped the money into Ben's pocket. Reynolds, let my rider go. All uh, right, Peterson, you question him. No time for questions now. We've got to keep the mail moving. Transfer the pouches. Well, Mr. Peterson, on the way here, I was robbed. What? Uh, here, you see? I told you he'd come here with that story. He sold out to crooks. These mail pouches look all right to me. Here's the Julesburg pouch with the lock just as it should be. What's that for? See for yourself. Ben, you said you were robbed. Yeah, Barbara. Two crooks waylaid me and stole some pouches. But they held blank paper. Blank, blank paper? A friend met me before I got to where the crooks were waiting. We switched pouches. He carried the mail past the crooks and gave it back to me just outside of town. Reynolds, I've opened the Julesburg pouch and there is no mail for you. But you could have it. Andrews admits being robbed. The Julesburg mail arrived here safe with the seals unbroken, and that's what counts. My job is to see that the rest of the mail gets going to the next station. On your way, Sam. Now, Reynolds, have you anything more to say? I've got plenty to say. I expected a letter with a cash draft in it. It's not here. Now, listen, Jake. There's the marshal right over there. He's riding this way. Why don't you make your complaint to him? I certainly shall complain to him. 
I'll tell him what I suspect and insist that he search this young scallywag here. Marshal, I want to speak to you. And I have something to say to you, Reynolds. You're under arrest. What? The Me? charge is conspiracy to rob the United States mail. What do you mean by such a ridiculous charge? Now take that sneak gun of yours. But this is preposterous. Don't act innocent, Reynolds. My deputies and I caught Baxter and Gates in the act of robbing the pony rider. Isn't that right, Andrews? Yes. The deputies are bringing him in. I came ahead to get you. I don't know anything about what those, those men did. You'll have a chance to argue that in court. But you won't get far. Both crooks named you as the one who hired them. They'll try to get light jail terms by being government witnesses against you. Hey, those double crossing me. Never wait here. Yeah. The mail wasn't stolen. Not the mail, Reynolds. The mail pouches. That is. They're government property. Stealing them is a serious offense. Hey. The jail's right down the street. Get going. But wait, listen, Epp. Get going. Someone will pay for this. Those double crosses. Out there, pretty boy. Looks like Reynolds finally outsmarted himself. Yeah, that's right. He... Hey. hey, look what I found in my pocket. A $100 bill. I reckon Reynolds put it there when he grabbed you, Ben. He wanted it to be found when you were searched. It was to prove you'd been bribed. Well, then this is Reynolds' money. Yes, I'll take charge of it. I'll offer it to him, but I doubt that he'll admit it's his. If he won't claim it, we'll put it into the school farm. Oh, good. Ben, did you really meet someone who carried the mail part of the way? Well, sure. And while he was riding to meet me, his Indian friend followed the trail with the marshal. He led the way to where the crooks were waiting. The marshal caught him red-handed in the act of robbing me. Of the empty pouches? Yeah, Last man wasn't sure Tonto could find the mail thieves in time. So he gave me pouches without mail in them, in case the crooks did steal them. Tonto? Well, that's the name of the Indian. Did the man who helped you wear a mask? Well, yeah. Well, then he's the man who helped me that night in Reynolds' office. That's right, Barbara. Oh, I do wish I might see him again. I, I wish I could thank him for all he's done. You can see him, Barbara. He and Tonto are up yonder on the hilltop. Oh? <laughs> but as for thanking him... Well, he doesn't wait for things. He's the Lone Ranger. We'll return in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, I.O.U. Champions are made, not born. I guess we all agree with that. Take the story of Wheaties champion Red Chaindeans to the St. Louis Cardinals. As a bat boy for a team, to be a champ was young Red's dream. He learned to feel, to hit, to slide. And here's a tip to be your guy. Wheaties helped him hit his stride. Now Red makes that double play. Wheaties keep him on his way. Sure, Red Chaindeans has been powering up on Wheaties for 20 years. And here's where the power comes from. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Let's go, Red. Hit a double. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> Reunited with friends in Modoc City, the Lone Ranger and Tonto didn't know that killers had followed them to town for the express purpose of murdering them. Be sure to listen. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.